Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today I want to talk about Farah, and I think now's a good time to start talking about her, considering the Overwatch Switch version that will be hitting the shelves in a couple of weeks, and I think that the console PC divide that has been going on for quite some time is epitomised by this hero, so it makes balancing her an absolute nightmare. Before we talk about potential changes I suppose to the hero, we really need to talk about her pick rate, because the more that you talk with people, especially in the sort of console PC debate, that she is a tale of two heroes, and to an extent that's true, she is a lot stronger and a lot more oppressive on console and PC, but looking at the stats, it isn't that much noticeable, at least across the board instead of looking at the top tiers. We'll start with that, we'll go over to overbuff, looking at the stats, pick rate, win rate over the last 30 days this month, and looking across all of the tiers before we look specifically into Grandmaster, because that gives us a good amount of insight of what people are doing at the moment. Faris pick rate is fairly low. 1.41%, the DPS heroes with a lesser pick rate, a Soldier, Tracer, which I find quite surprising, Bastion, Sombra, and Torbjorn. Her win rate is also sub 50%. It is a 49%, so it's not too bad, but this is what I mean. When you go over to PlayStation and Xbox, it's not that much different. Faris pick rate bumps up to 1.8%, even heroes like Ash and Junkrat have a higher pick rate, and her win rate has actually dropped just a little bit, like half a percent down to 48.7, so it doesn't improve across the board for PlayStation. Xbox is very much the same, her pick rate is at 1.2%, nearly the same as PC, and her pick rate is even less. So you could sort of get rid of this notion that overall Farrah is just better on console than PC, she can be a lot stronger with the control scheme I suppose you have with a controller versus mouse and keyboard, but it is a lot harder to play Farrah on console than PC, as somebody that does play a decent amount on console. Not a huge amount, I don't really do competitive but from the times that I've picked it up, I'd say that it's a give or take. But going over Grandmaster is where you really start to see the difference. Farah's pick rate on PC and GM is 0.98%, just above Junkrat to give you some context, but her win rate has gone up to about 52%. That might seem like a lot, but she still has one of the lowest win rates in GM, with Anna, Genji, Sombra, Trace and Winston being a lot worse. Going over to PlayStation though, Farah does improve across the board. Farah's pick rate goes up to 2.5%, just a bit better than Baptiste and Widowmaker, and her win rate goes up to 55%. Not the best, but certainly not unnoticeable. She's about on par with Ash and Console, which again, might be one of those solid picks to choose from. But to give you some context, that's like McCree on PC. On Xbox, she's played a lot less, 1% pick rate, but her win rate is at 58% overall, meaning that she's in the top four alongside Ash, which again is very odd, Brigitte and Junkrat. So weirdly enough, Farah is a lot better on Xbox than she is on PlayStation, but that's where you start to see this idea that Farah is very strong on console, not so much on PC. But I just really wanted to highlight it almost as a misconception that it isn't a complete divide. She isn't Jekyll and Hyde, you know what I mean? It's not anything that distinct. But the whole point of this video was to really talk about and highlight how much of a problem balancing Farah has been for Blizzard over the past four years, to a point where I don't even think they care about her anymore. Today I want to go over over all of the changes that Farah has had in her lifetime. Very easy to go over because it comes in three patches. The first, we have to go all the way back to November the 15th, 2016, when Sombra came out to give context. She had a change to her rocket launcher. The minimum explosive damage has been increased by 13%, but the explosive knockback has been decreased to 0%. This was around the time where you could knock people around with your rockets. That was changed, but now she does more explosive damage overall. And her jump jets, the lift has been increased by 35%. I remember way back when, it was people showing how much of a change this was, from Farah being able to fly from the defender spawn on Eichenwald all the way to the first ledge. I don't know if you guys remember people like Valkyrie highlighting that. That was a pretty big change way back when, around the time where Faro was relatively strong. He was used quite a lot, Back in the older days, she was one of the DPS picks, but over time, Hitscan had this nice power creep, and the likes of McCree and Soldier became fairly strong, and then of course, Widowmaker Hansa with the snipers started to take over. Move forward two years to October the 9th, we had the changes a year ago, might I add, where Farah players were arguing whether it was a buff or a nerf. The concussive blast cooldown was reduced to 9 seconds from 12, which was a buff in itself, but this is where things start to get very confusing for Farah players. The rocket launcher attack speed had been increased, the recovery time between shots was reduced, meaning that you could fire more, but the damage was redistributed between explosion and impact. The explosive damage that a rocket would do was reduced to 65, and the impact damage was increased to 55. Explosive knockback was reduced by 20%, and it just made it so the 
rocket's explosive damage didn't do as much as it used to, but if you managed to nail those impact shots, which fired a lot faster and recovered a lot quicker, you were able to do quite a good amount. That's where the big argument came between, because you had fire players that were using it to try and win those 1v1s or to get very precise shots on enemies, that was a buff for them, but for the most part, Faro was used in a sort of spammy situation, much like a Junkrat, being able to fire behind a Reinhardt or an Arisa shield to do splash damage on nearby enemies, build the ult up a lot quicker, and go from there. It was almost a year ago, a year and two days, since that change came in, and I think it's fair to say that over time this has looked more like a nerf than a buff, especially now that we're in this sort of bunker comp position. Heroes like Junkrat have been nullified by the likes of barriers, but we did see Farah played in the Overwatch League Grand Finals, which is the gameplay that you've been seeing on screen. So it makes me wonder what old Farah would have fared like in this meta in general. She might have been a really good option considering that Sigma can throw a shield up in the air to block you. Might be a waste of your resources if you're playing Sigma. And then in March, the explosive damage was increased a little bit from 16.25 to 20, but overall it's fair to say that I didn't do all that much. But I'd say the bigger problem for Farah overall of this time has just been the power creep of other heroes against her and how strong that they've become. I mean, you have to look at all of the hit scans. Soldier 76, whilst he isn't a popular pick, has been made a lot stronger against Farah. McCree, his effective range has been increased. Ash has been added into the game. Anna is the most popular support in the game that can do bits and pieces against him. Widow making Hanzo are the best DPS characters in the game overall. Granted, we're in a barrier meta so they don't get used a lot, but you can guarantee that when Arisa or Sigma gets nerfed in any capacity, people will start playing Hanzo and Widow again. Farah doesn't fare very well against them at all. Even in a time like we've had with Goats being all close quarters, double barrier at the moment, you would expect Farah to be a lot stronger now than she's ever been, and it's just not happening for her. She should be relishing right now, and we even saw glimmers of that again in the Overwatch League with San Francisco Shock using her and it showed her strength against them but I do think it should be a lot more for her and I think Blizzard should help her out in some capacity but therein lies the problem not only do you have this divide between console and PC if you buff her on PC it might make her a little bit stronger but on console it might make her very strong but also a lot of these changes and buffs are to target people that can exploit Farrah at lower ranks much like they can with Junkrats and Reapers and stuff like that to really exploit the lack of mechanical skills from the enemy or even their game sense, but how rough she could be as you climb up the tiers as the good widow making Hansas and McCrees start to come out with their mechanical skill, just outdoing you. That's what I guess this whole buff nerf thing was about with Farah to make her less exploitable at the lower tiers by just doing a lot of splash damage, but meaning if you can land those shots to be more accurate, you can gain a lot out of this. And this is why I think Blizzard just don't want to touch Farah. They don't necessarily want to do much with her because they don't want to rock the boat too much. She's still been used used, she has her place in the game, and I guess Blizzard are uh, maybe a bit scared to touch her because how they buff her on PC might affect how strong she is not only on console but in the lower ranks. So Blizzard need to find a way to make her better overall without making her too good in like bronze, silver, gold, but also in the higher tiers on console too where very good players can really use her to their advantage. No other hero I think has just been power sloped, I guess it would be. Basically the opposite of a power creep. As the game's been out, Farah's been indirectly nerfed multiple times like we've highlighted on the channel. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. It's not a simple case of she needs buffing. There's all of these other things that Blizzard need to go through in order to make sure that she's not overtuned and overpowered, but I just don't think they're going to do that. There's too many moving parts with a hero like this. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.